Okay, if you're poor, you're gonna love this episode. So ever since I did this YouTube thing, I really wanted to get a new camera and that's the Sony A7 Mark III. Not that that matters, but it costs so much money, 2000 euros. So the plan was I'm gonna build a small app that checks the price on Amazon. And if that price falls down to whatever I want, basically like $1,600, then it's gonna automatically send me an email. So that's what we're gonna build. We're gonna flex our snake skills, okay, our Python skills. And then we, we can celebrate and we still don't have enough money to, to, get, to buy the damn product. So yeah, you can use this on multiple websites, whatever you prefer. Let's stop talking and let's get going. Okay, let's get going. So I just have a scraper.py opened up here. It's just an empty, empty uh, Python script. Okay, so you can do this on your own in VS Code. And what we need to do is actually install two separate things. So we can open up here. Oh my God, this is from the <laughs> finished project. Okay, so what you can do is say npm. Actually, npm is, is not what we want, okay? We're working with Python. We can say pip install requests and bs4. All right, I'm gonna explain what these two things do. So install those two. After you do that, we can import, let's say import, requests and what this basically does is we can get a page we can access a url so maybe amazon and we can pull out the actual data from that website okay so i'm um, all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say url and i'm gonna set this equal to and the one i used is this from amazon.de so as you can see here i just searched sony a7 you can get this one too uh, Amazon.de, search for Sony A7. I think it's the first or second link if you want to follow along with exactly this. Um, yeah, and we can paste this back in here in our URL. Perfect. Now, not every website is going to work with web scraping. Some block it, some don't. This one works. So this is the one we're going to use. Okay, um, that's the first thing. The second thing I want is headers. So I'm gonna set this equal to a dictionary here. I'm gonna say user agent, all right? And this is just basically gives us some information about our browser and we need to pass this into our header. So how can you get it? You can search for my user agent, all right? And you can just copy this and paste it in. So let me just paste this in here like so, perfect. That's the second thing I have. And now we can actually make a call. So I can say page equals to requests, all right, the library that we're using, get, and I can get the URL. And the second argument is gonna be requests equal, not requests, my bad, headers equal to the headers. Okay, that's it. That's all we need, perfect. And this actually returns all the data from that website. Now, what beautiful soup does for us is we can parse it and we can pull out individual items from it. So I can say from BS4 import beautiful soup. Okay. Now, if you're from JavaScript, you would do this reversed. So it would be import blah, blah, blah from. Well, in Python, we are cooler and we do it the opposite way. Okay. So once we have that, I can create another variable called soup and I can set this equal to beautiful soup and pass in the page.content. And the second argument is gonna be a string called html.parser. All right, this is gonna parse everything for us and now we can actually pull out individual pieces of information. If you wanna see what this did actually, we can I, I can show you, we can say print soup and there's a method on it called prettyfy. All right, let's run this. We can call scraper.python scraper.py okay run this take a look oh my goodness hacker man there's so much it's not stopping it will never stop just like my mental state okay so there we go take a look we have a lot of divs here with spans and everything i don't know amazon is crazy and we're just gonna close this up okay so what we can do is we can go back here press f12 and we can just pull out any data we want i can hit this icon here click on this take a look we have a span with a product title how can i pull that information out i can create a div here called not the div a variable called title and i can just say soup.find 
all right? And you have a lot of different ones that you can experiment with. As you can see, you can have a name, attributes, and you can add a class in here if you want to search by class. And uh, we can also do by ID. That's what I'm going to show you. So I can say find ID and set this equal to product title because that's how it's named there. Now this actually, if we print this out title, this actually returns me the whole div, I believe. Yeah, take a look. We have a span here and we have the span with the actual information. And there's a lot of empty white spaces for some reason. Amazon, what you doing? I'm not sure. Okay, so to actually get the text out of it, we can do dot get text here. All right, that's only going to return the text, but we still have that problem of having having a lot of empty spaces here, as you can see. So we can actually strip that out as well. And how do you do that? Well, <laughs> by saying dot strip, I just said it. So there we go. Let's do another Python scrapper.py, take a look, and we should get back only Sony Alpha, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. Now, I don't actually need this, but hey, why not? Let's have it here. What I actually want to have is the price. So let's analyze the price. Click on the price. It has an ID of price block our price. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say price is equal to soup.find. I'm going to say ID equal to price block our price. All right, make sure you don't misspell this. And we can also extract the text here and get text. Now, the problem here is that this is actually a string, all right? And we cannot really compare um, the values. So I cannot compare a number to a string. So we need to actually modify this in just a bit. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, what I can do is I can add a converted price and set that equal to, and I can just extract the first five characters, all right? So I can say price add these brackets and say zero to five. And all this does is it checks the first five. So um, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. So it only extracts this information. It doesn't extract the dot 99 with the euros as well. All right, so if we console log this out, print converted price. And let's take a look at what we have, run this. And it's going to give us back 1.989, all right? Otherwise, it would give us back 1.989.99 and a euro symbol, okay? So that's why we did this. So we only have back the first five characters. But it's still a string, which is not good. So what we can do is we can add a float here, wrap this around in the float, and now it turns it into a float. If you don't know what a float is, well, basically an integer an int is a whole number, so like 5, and a float is like 5.89, all right? So you can add a dot to it. Okay, so we have this back, our converted price. So what we actually want to do here is something like this. If our converted price is smaller than 1,800 or whatever you want the price to be like that, then I want to send an email, all right? So I'm going to say send mail. Perfect. So that's what I want to happen. Okay, and we can actually leave everything like so. What I'm going to do is take everything we have up here and wrap it inside a function. So I'm going to say def define check price. All right, this is just a function. And I'm going to add everything that we have from here inside this function. All right, get rid of some empty spaces. Perfect. So we need to define the send email. So I'm going to just go down here and say def send email is going to be another function. And now we're going to take a look at how we can actually send an email with the updated price. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to do this with Gmail. Uh, and for this to work, we're going to have to enable the two step verification. There's another way we can do it, a simpler way. Uh, let me quickly show you. So what we can do, I'm going to pull this up here is if you search for something like Google, allow less secure apps or something like that. Let's scroll down here. Let's secure apps, Google account. Okay. So you can enable this one. There's going to be an enable button and that's going to work just fine. You can use your Gmail password and you can send emails just fine. If you don't want to use your Gmail password, what you can do is you can enable these two step verification. So just Google two step verification or whatever it is called. So here or the second link, 
All right, just enable your two-step verification. And once you do that, what you can do is you can Google for Google app password, all right? And you can create passwords for different things. I'm gonna sign into my Google account. And as you can see, you can create one, you can hit here, select app, and you can create a, a generate a new password for your email, for you, your YouTube calendar, whatever you want. So in this case, you would select mail and you would select Windows computer. All right, that's what I'm on. You, you might probably have Mac or whatever. I'm gonna delete this old one I had and I'm gonna generate. All right, so this just generates us a new password that we can use. Whew, okay. <laughs> Let's go back to our scraper and see what's up. Okay, so we actually need to import another package here. We don't need to install this separately. So what we can do is we can just go up here and say import SMT lib, all right, SMT lib. What this is, is basically a simple mail protocol or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it enables you to send uh, emails. Uh, let's go down here. And what we need to do is actually establish a connection between our connection and Gmail's connection. So to do that, we can say set up a server here and set it equal to SMTB blip dot SMTP. And what we need to pass here is smtp.gmail.com. All right, so this is Google's or Gmail's SMTP. And the connection number is gonna be eight, uh, 587, all right? That's what we need to pass in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say server dot hello, <laughs> like that. All right, if you don't know what an hello is, let me pull it up for you here on the screen. Basically, it's a command sent by an email server to identify itself when connecting to another email. All right, so it kind of establishes a connection between the two. Okay, so we need to call that. After we do that, what we need to do is go down here and say server dot start TLS, which basically encrypts our connection. And then we can call server dot hello again. All right, I know this is getting pretty, pretty jargony, but hey, that's what we need to do. So that's what we're gonna do. If you don't remember this, you can just always come here and check. So next up, what we wanna do is we actually need to log in. So we can call server.login. The first argument is gonna be the user, as you can see, and the second one is gonna be the password. So my user is gonna be admagician, I know. <laughs> <laughs> .gmail.com and the second one is going to be the password. Now, again, depends what you did. If you did the two-step authentication, then you can just generate this password, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pass this in here. We have the connection and now we can actually set up our email. I can add a subject, set this equal to, hey, the price fell down. And the second one is going to be a body. Set that equal to check the Amazon link. All right, and I actually can copy this link down here. So our email actually gives us the link back with the product. Perfect, and then we can set up a message. I'm gonna format this string by adding an F, which means we can just basically interpolate subject here and just add subject. All right, kind of like JavaScript with the dollar sign and curly braces. And then we can add a new line, new line, and say body, okay? Which is the actual message. Perfect, and then we can send the email. We can say server.sendmail. And here, what we need to pass in is from, as you can see, from, to, and the actual message. So from, I'm gonna say edmagician at gmail.com. And the second one is gonna be, I'm gonna send it to myself again, so to another email. Uh, I'm gonna say my full name here, I know. And the third argument is gonna be the actual message, which we did up here. So from, to, and the message. And finally, I'm just gonna print out that, hey, email has been sent. Yeah. Perfect. And finally, we need to close up the connection. So I'm gonna call server.quit. Uh, quit my life. Okay, so that's what we have. So now up here, what I can say is, 
hey, if the converted price falls below at 1.7 thousand, all right, so this is like 1,700 euros, oh, the JavaScript, then we can send an email. That's it. That's all we need to do. Now, in this case, this is not going to work because our price is, this one is bigger. So let's give it a shot. Boom. Well, what we actually need to do is call this function, this check price, because we added it into a function. So we're not actually calling anything here, as you can see. So let's go down here and just call this function. Okay, let's take a look. <sighs> Please. All right, so we get back the price and the title because we just printed that out on the screen, but nothing really happens. We don't get this, hey, email has been sent. However, take a look if our price changes in the future. So I'm going to just add a bigger sign here to make this true. All right, because this is bigger, but you can add any price you want here. Well, now this is going to be true and it's going to send me an email. So let's take a look. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Hey, email has been sent. Woo. Let's take a look here. Let me go to my email and prove, prove it to you. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in here. Oh, never mind. All right, so take a look. Boom, boom, boom. Email has been sent. Price has fell down and we get the Amazon link to it. So everything works just fine. Perfect. Now, what we can do is we can actually make this run for longer, uh, so multiple times. And to do that, what we can do is we can just import something. This is, again, you don't need to install this. We can just import time and uh, let's see what we do. Rather than just running this once, I can just add a while loop here, while true. So this is always going to run uh, like that. What I can do is say check price, and then I can add a time sleep, and I can add the number of seconds I want this to sleep. So basically, it runs once, and then it pauses the execution for a number of seconds. So if I add 60 here, then it's gonna pause it. As you can see, delay the execution for a given number of seconds. So this would check every minute for you, okay? However, that's probably not a good idea. So you would wanna check this at least like maybe once a day. So you would do, I don't know, my math is really bad. So you would do, I mean, 60 times, <laughs> 60 times 60 would be probably an hour. So there you go. Now you acquired the skill of scraping the web and also sending some simple emails. So I highly recommend you to try it out with different websites, see what information you can get. Now, again, not every website is going to let you uh, do this. Some have some checks, anti-web scraping kind of checks uh, with either captchas or whatever. So not everything is going to work, um, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, experiment and also don't send like a thousand requests. Uh, to mess around with their server. Uh, yeah, have fun with it. I also did one with getting all the recent movies of the IMDB, so the latest movie releases, and it also saves it down into a file for you, a CVS file. Uh, if you want to see that, I might put it up on Patreon. Just leave a comment in the description and I might upload the source files for that as well. Okay, thanks again so much for watching. I apologize for no magic tricks for today. I'll do this one because <laughs> just super simple and stupid, but I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.